to make final decision on all matters uh, before the Commission other than site plans. The Commission's decision to approve or deny a site plan is the final decision by the City unless the applicant appeals to City Council. You'll need to contact the City Clerk or Community, community Development Department staff, well, gee, easy enough for me to say, Department staff for details on those Council hearings. This evening, the applicants will be given 10 minutes to present the request after staff's presentation. Proponents and then opponents are allowed to speak with each speaker allowed a maximum of five minutes. The applicant will then be allowed five minutes for rebuttal. The issue will then be closed and the commission will discuss and vote on the issue after motion. All comments are to be germane to the issue under consideration and speakers are to maintain a courteous manner. Items listed on the consent portion of the agenda will not be individually discussed and will be considered for approval in accordance with the recommendation in the staff report. There's one item, by the way. Unless an individual present or a member of the commission requests the item be removed from the consent agenda and separately considered under the public hearing agenda. The City of Des Moines is pleased to provide accommodations to individuals or groups with disabilities and encourages participation in city government. To better serve you, when possible, please notify us at least three business days in advance at area code 515-283-4209 should special accommodations be required. Assistive listening devices are also available for meetings in the council chambers. Planning and Zoning Commission meetings are broadcast on Media Mediacom Cable Channel 7 for customers with that service. Broadcast is also streamed live in real time on the City of Des Moines website at www.desmoinesgov.org. You need to click the Watch Live link for those uh, council or for those meetings. Uh, of course, you won't be here, and we'd like to have you here. So, uh, that having been said, has everybody had a chance to look over the minutes? Any discussion? Seeing none. Motion. It's been moved. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Yeah, I'm going to abstain, too, three of us. Um, the next thing is the uh, consent items on the agenda, which is a request from Atrium Finance 3 LP, represented by Joe Morrissey, officer for vacation of a 45 foot by 6 foot segment of the subsurface rights within the north six feet of the Walnut Street right-of-way adjoining the property at 101 East Locust Street to allow for placement of fats, oils, and grease interceptor on the sanitary sewer service within the public right-of-way for the Embassy Suites Hotel. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to that item tonight? Is anybody not sure whether they're here for that or not? Okay. All right. Seeing none, uh, is there a motion? Greg? Any discussion? We're moving the consent items. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed, same sign, acclamation. Yeah. Item number two is a request from Wakanda Living LLC, represented by Jennifer Drake, to amend the Wakanda Living PUD concept plan. Eric, you presenting on this one? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, Eric Lundy, Senior City Planner. Um, this is an currently an approved uh, plan unit development for uh, single-family detached residential units. What's, I'm going to boil it down to the simplest terms. They're taking the east <clears throat> six lots and making them into ten by attached lots, which adds four units to the overall development. Um, as right, so part I'm, of that. So I'm clear, they're going to make by attached lots as opposed to single family residences. Yeah, this is the doing. current okay. lot configuration. I'll zoom out so you can see that here. Uh, there's, you know, to the west, these parcels are developed. They've put in the, the drive access for all of the lots and the, and the utilities and so forth. They're taking these eastern lots right here and redividing them for by attached units. So. Eric, just to confirm. That's two units connected with a shared wall, but a lot line down the middle. Correct. So there's individual ownership of each unit, correct? Yeah, they'll be basically like townhomes, condo um, situation where two they'll, units. Be, they'll actually be a property line between down the wall of the building. So, uh, this is looking to the west, if you can see on the the aerial, there's an eastern driveway right here. And in the foreground of this picture, on the left side, you'll see that driveway. So you're looking west down Park Avenue in that photo. This is looking more directly south. Uh, 
This is looking more to the southeast from Southwest 18th Street. Park, parks in the foreground there. And then this is more at the western edge where there is existing single family homes that were developed. And you can see the character of those. They went from uh, kind of eclectic uh, arts and crafts styling on the homes based on the PUD standards that were adopted. This is in your packet too, but this is the lot configuration as proposed, so you can see how these lots narrow down into these into the six uh, by attached. I'm sorry, ten by attached. Previously it was six lots, now it's ten by attached. So four additional units total. Four total plan. units added to the development. Uh, this is a rendering of the uh, elevation that would be an example of one of the by attached. The massing and scale is similar in appearance when you're driving by as, t as a uh, single family dwelling. However, the two, because of the garages being in the center, it, it's not quite the same as uh, what you might see with a single family dwelling, but in terms of the mass and scale and the design elements, it's very much uh, compatible and from staff's perspective, <clears throat> with the rest of the single family detached units that will be there. I passed around the cards, so some of you may be getting those. Uh, we do have opposition uh, cards from two separate uh, parcel owner properties and then uh, a number from the condos at Park and Fleur. Uh, then there's one in favor also in that group. The way that this is treated under the provision for that might kick in a 6-7 vote, this property, it, even if it was all unanimously in opposition, would only count for that portion of the land that's within that 200 feet. So um, this isn't approaching any type of trigger for a 6 out of 7 vote for the approval of the amendment. Staff is um, in support of this. We recommend that it be found in the character uh, of the 2020 community character plan. Uh, we do want to ensure that the elevation standards are in, integrated into the, the con conceptual plan documents. You see the second sheet in your set. That's the, the single family. We want to make sure that those uh, by attached units are incorporated into that. <coughs> Eric, are we changing the density if we do this? Very slightly. Not it would not it won't. Put but we're it not over going any. from low density to medium density, or from medium density to high density. No, in fact, um, at I the mean, time. I mean, obviously, we're changing the density. Yeah, I'm it was already when when you did the PUD previously, it was amended to become low medium, which allows for the up to eight units per acre and it's going to be well it's still well below eight units per acre and low and medium allows for a two unit configuration on a dwelling so that it's also in conformance from that perspective do we have anybody in this association that's in in opposition to this i haven't received any cards from any of the owners within that doesn't okay. mean they're not here to speak or, All right. um, they still would have opportunity to voice that opposition uh, again, we're recommending approval. We're also recommending approval of the preliminary plat, was it, which is being run uh, concurrently, showing the same lot configuration as being requested for the conceptual plan amendment. And so you also uh, have the preliminary plat documents in your uh, handouts. I do want to point out that in the Part B there of the staff recommendation, that should read Wakanda Living. There's a D typo on that missing. Anything else, sir? I don't have anything else at this point unless you have any questions. Any questions? Is the applicant present? Yes. Please come forward, give us your name and address. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Joe Petruszynski, and I represent Hubble Realty Company. 
located at 6900 West Town Parkway in West Des Moines. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight and share our project. Uh, really, the reason why we're moving forward with this bi-attached product is that it, it mimics uh, what is there today on the west end of the development other than uh, it provides an opportunity uh, for more people to make what kind of living their home. We received uh, from some course members and from others in the community uh, a desire to live in this community uh, but in a more affordable framework which would be a, a by attached structure. If you recall, some of you have run the PNZ when this came forward originally, the original plan was for bi-attached units and it was Hubble's desire based on the level of interest which was significant at the time uh, to do a townhome living environment that was all detached. But we all know the market has done what it has done and has kept people in their homes and people moved away from uh, this lifestyle of living and, and now we want to provide that opportunity for them but just in a little slightly different fashion. There's some concern raised, and legitimate concern raised by folks that uh, there's going to be different standards followed here than, than what's been adopted for the course. But I want to assure you that the architectural standards that we have put in place are not changed before you tonight. We shared that extensively with staff. Um, there uh, has been concern raised about 360 degree architecture, which is a standard in writing with the course right now. Um, there's some concern by, by Wakanda uh, members uh, that we're not going to apply those standards. Um, really what those come down to is, is agreements between us and the course, and we will follow through agreements and negotiations with the course and architecture as we move through this project. We have an architecture review board established, and uh, we have great, wonderful representation from the course, and those types of issues uh, we, we may hear about tonight, but we will work through those. But for, in terms of this project moving forward, those architectural standards we have in place uh, that are of public record are going to continue to be followed. It is our intent to keep the integrity and value of this development alive. Uh, just provide another housing choice for people who really want to be uh, in this unique development in Des Moines. You, the Park Avenue from those pictures, as you can see, is essentially a Park Avenue beautification project, taking an area that was really once a dump site and turning it into a gem. And, and uh, we want to continue that legacy with the product we have before you today. Continue the tradition of the architecture you see out there now. If you have any questions of me, I'd be happy to answer anything you, anything you have. Any questions? I have one, Mr. Chair. Joe, uh, what is the uh, price point of this new product versus the single dwelling units that you, uh, I know you won't want to divulge your secrets, but what are we talking about being able to afford to live there versus not? Uh, Commissioner Fitzgerald, I, unfortunately, cannot answer that question, but with me tonight is another representative of Hubble Realty Company, Rachel Flint. She's our sales manager and also our listing agent is here as well. So can I, Mr. Chairman, if I can invite them forward, they can answer that sure, question. Be fine. I'm Sharon Klaus. I'm with Prudential First Realty. I've been the uh, real estate agent for the Wakanda Project for the last year. And I am Rachel Flint with Hubble Realty Company. I'm the sales manager. So can you, answer, can you guys answer the question? Absolutely. Um, the starting price on the far east end would be two ninety nine nine. dollars We've already placed a tentative reserve on one at that price point and then they will move up. But we're finding that the buyers that are coming to me right now want to stay between that 300 to 350 range. And on the villas at the West End, we're ranging from 400 all the way up to five and over 500 up there. So it's 25% reduction in the price, and that seems to help the public that's coming and looking in that price range. That's really not that much. No, but it's $100,000. To the buyer. Relatively. Yeah, I mean, to, to the buyer, it's significant. But no, it's not It's not lowering the standard. We're not going way down on a lower price unit down there. And I would also say, as you continue to move forward, the home sites do get bigger and allow for those twin homes to get larger, which then would increase the price as you move down. So you would have a nice transition between 
the single family lots that are right next to it there that will be higher priced homes. So when you move from east to west, if you look on the documents in front of you, those lots do provide a much larger buildable envelope. Thank you. That's the only question. Sure. Any other questions? Before you before you get out of here, <laughs> Joe, it's all right. Um, are we changing height at all on any of these new buildings? No, sir. These are these are typical units. They will look very similar to what's out there today. So we're it will not be having, in direct we're not conformance. Having a higher building as a result of doing this. No, sir. And and one thing that's really spelled out in the architectural standards. Um, and, and that I, I, we focused on when this was all adopted was that these houses have to follow true period style when they're developed. So um, that, even though they're unique, they follow the character and flavor of Old Des Moines as we're building them. Okay. Mr. Chair. Any other questions? CJ. Um, I have a question. I'm, I'm um, looking at the, this particular picture here that you showed us. Uh, which is facing, I believe this is facing Park Avenue, correct? That is correct. What, uh, you don't show us the back. What is facing a golf course itself? It's the back side of the picture. And unfortunately, I don't have 360 degree architecture for you tonight. The only thing that I can assure you is those standards that have been adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission still apply to these units. So the similar character of architecture uh, that was adopted applies 360 degrees around as, as the standards apply. I don't have a rendering, and quite frankly, that rending, rendering is just one of our concepts that we could come up with the, in the office. What happens with construction of these units is the buyer determines that period style or the type of unit they want, and then we construct it based off those architectural standards. So this is just a concept in itself. So then two buyers would have to agree on the concept, are you saying? Uh, what we they have to do is work with Hubble Homes to develop the concept for those houses. That is correct, for the most part. Or Hubble Homes could elect to go speculative, and put something up with a certain period style based on those architectural standards. It can go either way. That is correct. Okay, well, I have another question. Oh, um, it refers in here to the trees. Uh, will there be any more tree removal if you change this? concept? Uh, there likely will be tree removal, similar to what we would for putting single family home. We will adhere to the ordinances in place uh, to mitigate trees properly. But will there be more than if it stayed a single family? I don't believe so because it's kind of, it's, it's a difficult answer because someone could elect to design a home that would preserve a tree. Generally speaking, from a conservative perspective, the answer is no, because of how the site is arranged. You had to remove the trees there in place. However, somebody could create it, be creative and preserve a tree like we did on the uh, east side of the development, or west side of development. I don't know if you know it, but we actually designed a home to keep a tree, a big tree in place. We, you could do something like that, but conservatively speaking, we're gonna remove the same amount of trees, which are minimal. I think it's five, tr five trees and they're smaller trees. And again, we will replace them we put a significant more number of trees on site than what we're even required to do with the beautification of Park Avenue. So we will continue that. And my final question is, um, I wasn't on this commission when this was initially passed through. Um, have you held to what you were going to do with the houses that you have developed or have you made some changes in same building materials or anything or have you held true to what you said you were going to do? Yes, I mean, if you go out there and the way that those, the ordinances are interpreted, yes. I will say that everybody has their opinion on whether we did or not from an architectural perspective, but we do have an architectural expert on our architectural review committee and everything is reviewed by him and, and represented from the course and voted on. And from an architectural re review board, the answer is yes, we have. So you, the materials remained as they were approved by the commission? As approved and, by the commission and, and board. Council. And the sub boards that have been put in place as part of this whole process, yes. Thank you. Mike, did you have some addition? Yeah, I just wanted to point out that the original PUD did not have elevations for all four sides of every building. They were character elevations that were given. So what they're presenting tonight is 
consistent with what was shown on the initial approval of the PUD. You have a copy well, that for, for building CJ. elevations. You have a copy of that for CJ. So the sheet. Yeah, it's in the packet. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of the application? I'm going to open the public hearing. Anyone here to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the application? Please come forward. We're going to ask you to line up on the wall and come forward one at a time. Give us your name and address. Is this the appropriate lineup spot? That's the appropriate lineup spot. It's a cattle call. You didn't know that, did you? Please come forward. Give us your name and address. Uh, good evening. My name is John McKinney. Uh, my wife and I live at 1435 Park Avenue, which is one of the the red the red mark right across from the lots in question. Uh, point of order, uh, Mr. Chairman. There are several people here who didn't get the cards, and they're not reflected there either. So. I don't know if they're here to speak for themselves, but I, uh, I know that the first uh, letter that came out had an inaccurate date for the hearing, and subsequent letters had to come out. I'm not saying that would change anything tonight, but I, I do think it's misleading to think that there's only two red dots up there. Um, these people live next to us, and they didn't get a card or if they did you're talking about the area there on on park avenue yeah north of uh, park avenue actually the, the lots versus the dots the dots are on the far left no answer. well i meant a lot you're talking about the lots okay yeah. okay but um i do think there's some procedural issues that might uh need to be addressed if i may just point that out uh may i also say that the staff has been very helpful and i was very um very complimentary of them until I heard the recommendation. Uh, but other than that, they did a great job, and we got uh, information we would not otherwise have had. We've had no contact with uh, the developer, and uh, that has uh, probably led to some questions that could otherwise have been answered. Um, we were neighbor. We we lived there when the first plan came through, and we were lobbied or uh, uh, marketed uh, to be in favor of the project which ultimately we decided to go along with based on the assurances that we got. Uh, now, some of those assurances, uh, contrary to what the developer may believe, are not consistent with what we thought the assurances were. But they have been good neighbors. We think they've done a good job of developing. Uh, with all due respect to Wakanda, it looks a lot better there now than it did when it was a chain link fence. I never thought of it as a dump site, as someone indicated earlier, but it was. Uh, certainly improved, but our issue is is kind of twofold. One is the density. Uh, you can call it what you want, but when you take six lots and make it into ten, that's more people, and more people have cars, and more people have visitors. Uh, there's only two ways to get to these uh, properties from Park Avenue. One, uh, they aren't shown on the uh, on that plat there, but one of them is right across. Uh, from our property at the extreme east end. The uh, second one is about a block or so east of Floor Drive. Uh, help me out. Which yeah, the, the two points that he was referring to are this location on the west. OK. This location on the east. All right. Uh, most of the pictures that you were shown of the site were taken from my driveway, so I guess I uh, can rely on that uh, pretty well. Uh, the problem that doesn't come through in looking at these pictures is that Park Avenue from roughly where you, where you see that PUD sign up to the east is a hill. And from that sign to the west, the Floor Drive is also a hill. Park Avenue is a major thoroughfare for uh, a lot of traffic. Uh, I'm concerned about the traffic that's generated already by the plan. And to increase that further, uh, I think, is a significant challenge uh, to the safety features. Uh, people driving west uh, on Park Avenue crest a hill beyond what you can see right there. But unfortunately, they've been at a four-way stop sign a few blocks earlier. 
and most of them feel obliged to make up for the time lost by the time they get to our house. Uh, that in and of itself is something that you have to put up with, but that entryway to the east uh, is gated. Now, I don't know the rules and when it'll be open, when it won't, but I'm particularly concerned not so much about people leaving that area because they're on their own to figure out when it's okay to pull in. But I can tell you if they're leaving and pulling into westbound traffic, they've got to hurry because some of that traffic comes pretty quickly over the hill. What I'm more concerned about are people that are coming from the east and want to turn into the community when the gate is closed because they are not giving the people behind them um, much clearance to see what's coming. That's what we live with, but to double the number of people. It's more than just more people that live across the street from you. There is a density of population here uh, that is significant. If we could get the, the, the drawing that was here, I think this one, up on the board again. Yeah, you can just set it on top of that. I can do it. Yep. I'm not licensed to do that. <laughs> Either am I. <laughs> not yet. Now, <clears throat> again, about density, uh, we were, uh, we were told that the development was such that the high density part of the, of the PUD would be located at the high traffic area where the noise and so forth, the floor drive, uh, would be uh, the problem. So they would put denser population there. The east end, which is where we are, would be the single family high end residences. As you can see, what they're doing is they're taking both ends and making them higher density. Look at the lots across the street to the north where we live. That's the character, the nature of the neighborhood. It isn't lots with duplexes on it. And to come in here and say that that is not changing the character because of some standard in City Hall is not the same thing as saying that property is going to be different when they put a duplex there. I'm sure that's not the term they use. Uh, but it's going to be a house uh, with two families living in it and they share a wall. That used to be a duplex, whatever it is today. It's more people. Uh, and I, I... John, we're going to give you about another minute. Okay, I'm, I think I've said all I need to say. I, I, do, I do think that the uh, development has been a favorable addition to the neighborhood. I don't think it should be changed. I think uh, leave it the way it is and uh, we'll be happy. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions before John, before you leave? Any questions, John? Okay, thank you. Please come forward and give us your name and address. Uh, Bob Buckley. Uh, I'm representing the Board of Directors of Wakanda Club. There's no reason that I should not be here to support this project tonight. But Wakanda Club is not supporting the project. We go way back on this project and feel an affinity to not only Hubble Realty, but to the Hubble family over the years of their membership of Wakanda and the contributions that they've made to the community. We appreciate that. This project is changing what you have previously approved in a way that we think is detrimental. We have on numerous occasions tried to work with the developer to, for them to flesh out what the details are with respect to this project and have been rebuffed at every turn. I'm going to be measured about some of the comments I heard earlier today or tonight from the developer. The concept that, for example, the 360 degree architectural standards having been uniformly applied to the project as it currently exists on the west end of the project is absolutely false. The 360 standard, the Hubble's, Hubble Realty came to us and said, would you relax the 360 standard because of certain factors that, uh, uh, that are uh, impacting our development? And we reluctantly said yes. From that point forward, it has been always a one-sided show. Hubble Realty always comes to us with requests that we need to approve because they do not conform 
to this agreement or that agreement or the PUD. And we finally have decided as a board to finally say no. It's very unfortunate. It's, that was our property. And now we have to say enough is enough. I know they have a bad real estate project on their hands. We feel badly about that. But surely this body goes beyond just that. They made an economic decision. It hasn't exactly worked out. That doesn't mean that they can just change and change and change until they find an economic solution that works. That's why we are objecting. Again, if I were to summarize, a complete lack of details. It was demonstrated tonight. Where is the rear elevation? Where is the rear rendering? Well, we don't have that yet. To us, that sounds half-baked. And I think you should be approving something that's fully baked. Will they, have to know, will they have to remove more trees? Well, we really don't know. We really don't know, do we? That's half-baked. And I think you should step back and say, I'm not familiar with your processes, you should step back and say, we need more information. And the fact of the matter is, if Wakanda Club had more information, we would be here tonight accepting their changes rather than rejecting them. There were other aspects to the presentation earlier tonight that um, I'll be kind. I think they're stretching some details with respect to presenting the full facts to you. That's my presentation. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm accompanied by the general manager of Wakanda Club, who has been dealing most directly with Hubble Realty on this project. Uh, he may have something uh, further to say. Before you get away, Bob, any questions, Bob? Mike? I have a question. Bob, if this were to be deferred for a few weeks, would that be fruitful for your group? I think it would be fruitful. Okay. Now, I will have to add, however, we have been trying to contact Hubble and trying to get them to be more communicative with us and to no avail. They simply do not respond in a timely manner. So yes, that would be helpful if Hubble Realty would also go to the table and work hard with us. Any other questions? To your, to your knowledge, have there been any like neighborhood association or meeting reaching out? Because I have the impression from what I'm hearing right now, the answer is no. But I don't want to assume that. You mean other uh, homeowners in the project that are objecting? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. No of formal any. meetings of no. engaging the community or the neighborhood association that oversees that? No. Not, the, not to my knowledge. Okay, okay, thanks. Any other questions? Thank you, Bob. Dave, would you have anything else? Dave, come uh, forward and give us your name and address. Uh, Dave Schneider, general manager at Wakanda Club, 3915 Fleur Drive. Uh, <clears throat> I think Mr. Buckley summarized it rather well. I certainly uh, could answer any further clarifying questions as to some of the things that Mr. Buckley was referring to, if anyone had any questions. Anybody have any questions, Dave? Thank you. Anyone else to speak on in opposition to the application? Yes. <laughs> Phil Miller. Uh, I was a uh, caddy at what kind of club? Bus boy. Waiter, from the time I was 12 years old till I was 21, got me through Drake Law School <laughs> on my own. Used to study inside in the restaurant back room. Dropped a few trays in there. Caddied for almost every golfer there, including the next gentleman, William Blackburn. I call him Bill. And I, I call him Black Cowbell because I worked in the little restaurant snack bar for a while and they'd always come in. Or when I caddied for Bill and his group, the best golfers out there, I'll say Bill. 
He always ordered a black cow, so I call him Black Cow Bill. And I told him today. So I see him once in a while, I and mean, he's about the only one I uh, see anymore. But I can tell you this. I know every inch of Wakanda Club. I've been there. I've been on that area here when we called them hackers, <laughs> hooked the ball over into the junk, junk plate, junk kit, junkyard. That was never a junkyard, ever, ever. It had beautiful trees. The only time, I, the only reason I didn't come down here and protest and organize some of the neighbors because I, I, I assumed they were going to leave all those nice trees there. Just how many people do you think, and I've lived on the south side, 1425 Park, I call myself King of the Hill. I'm at the top. I'm right across from 13 Green. They hit their balls over there. I own a former member's house. I love it there. Drove by there one day when I was in the men's garden club. I saw this house for sale. I said, I want that house. I want to be on the south side. Anyway, that whole west side was beautiful. Grass, the most beautiful oak trees. What, what do you think people have told me since that was developed? Phil, my God, did you see what they did to those beautiful trees? Butchered them. Slaughtered them, cut them down. Why? Why? Who's responsible for that? There's no reason that why one tree should be cut down. Give me one reason. You didn't say a thing about that. You didn't even tell Bill, us about Bill, how, Bill, how Bill, to maintain the highest manners. Bill, Bill, we're going to ask you to address the, the council. Thank you. Thank you. I get a little. This is an emotional thing, it's a mental thing, it's a legal thing, as you all know. But I'm going to express myself as best I can, as politely as I can. Those beautiful trees. Gone. The trees that the Baltimore Orioles built their nests. Other birds, gone. No junk was ever in that roof. When I was there, <laughs> totally agree with what Mr. McKinney said. I'm highly Angry, I guess. I should have a better word. You think a lawyer would have a better word. I'm angry from what the gentleman who's the head of the board said. They don't cooperate. What makes you think? Give them two weeks? You think they're going to cooperate when they have it? You ever had clients or people that you know, you try to work with, and they stonewall you? That's what I get. Stonewall. Why did they stonewall the board of... Directors, my, where's their respect? They have no respect, I submit. Based on what the board, uh, chairman of the board said, I believe that. I think they just railroad what kind of club board. How high are these things going to be? I believe they'll be just the same as the other ones are. Answer the question. Bill, we're going to give you about one more minute, okay? Thank you. And is there a reason I only get one more minute? Is that a rule? Well, you get five minutes. I always give you an extra minute. Thank you, sir. I think that, of course, being a lawyer is a denial of due process and a fair hearing. <laughs> is that in the record? So we Now, let me just historically try to run real quick here. I was there when Wakanda Club built the barn up there, we called it. The neighbors didn't like it. We all got together. We filed a lawsuit against what kind of club? We settled it in the barn. How did we settle it? You got to put some landscape. You got to put some trees around this barn. My God, I step out of my house. I see a big barn there. 
And my gosh, how many wrecks are we going to have over there? I sit right there on Park Avenue. There's wrecks in the winter there all the time. When it's icy and snowy, they come over that hill going like crazy. Those people, how many of them are there going to be? They got 10 units. Is that right? Car, if they're married, they got kids. They got four cars. That's 40 cars. Phil. It was a six. Time. Time? Time. You're lucky. The judge would do the same thing to you, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> That's due process. Is there any is there any other questions? Any questions for me? Okay, thank you. I could talk more. Uh, I do I want know, to. I'm a lawyer can I just too. say one thing? I did not get a card either, so I questioned. You may check with staff. I, no, I want it on the record. Please, excuse me. Okay. I understand. I understand you're you're the boss. But I did not get a card. I want it on the record, please. Okay. I don't want to contact the staff. But check with staff and, and so I we submit, don't have a problem. I submit that this is in a proper meeting because a number of other people may not have gotten cards. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And due process requires it. Notice. We didn't get effective notice the first time. So somebody's not doing something right. Thank you. Please come forward, give us your name and address. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is William Blackburn. I live at 3131 Fleur Drive, Unit 601. I have been a member of Wakanda for, I've joined in 46. I'm not very good at math, but it's a long time ago. <laughs> and I now live at Park Fleur, and my unit is in the southeast corner of Park Fleur, and I look right out at the golf course and at Park Avenue. I think most of my concerns today have been addressed pretty much more than I would like to have heard, but uh, I'd like to just review a couple of things. I personally am very leery of anybody I make an agreement with who comes to me a little bit later and says, you know, we've been thinking about this and we'd like to amend that agreement and we'd like to change it. And I think, well. I'll listen to it, of course. But then I wonder, if I give in to this agreement change, what's the next agreement he's going to be wanting me to agree to? Right now, he says it's just a matter of future houses. Well, maybe it's going to be higher rise properties. Ah, it could be all kinds of things. I think we're saying we're opening Pandora's box, and I would Sincerely hope you give us careful consideration before you take the lid off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, hold on a second. Anybody questions? Thank you. Anyone else here to speak in opposition to the application? Give My us your name, name is Sally address. Bellis, and I'm at 1431 Park Avenue. I'm sorry, the name? Sally Bellis, B E L A S. And, um, my husband and I got our wires crossed. We did get a card, but we didn't get it sent in. But we are opposing it. You can still send that in we to can. Okay. before the council meets on it. Okay. Or you can leave it with me. Okay. We'll yeah, we'll do that. Anyone else here to speak in opposition? Seeing none. Joe, you need some rebuttal time? I'll give you five minutes. There's a number of comments that come up that I'm a little bit taken back by, but professionally there's some I just don't want to delve into, if that's okay with you. Um, you know Hubble Realty Company has stood before you in this town for over 150 years. You've seen the amazing things we've done in your town, and we stand with integrity, we stand with values, we stand following your process and following the words that have been written down and have always lived by them. All I can say is there's architectural standards in place here. And as you folks know, when an idea or project comes forward with architectural standards, each individual structure is vetted by those standards before they are developed. It's no different here. I can throw you concepts in front of you about duplexes that may or may not go down the site, but it's the architectural standards that dictate ultimately how they look. And there's an architectural board set up with members of Wakanda on it that approve that. So anything shown to you tonight, nothing has changed. That has not changed. There may be misinterpretation of those facts, but they have not changed. We did have a meeting with the board of directors to share the duplex idea with them. In terms of architecture, it is true that we did promise them renderings. 
that took some time to get back to them and further comment regarding 3 to 160 degree architecture. The fact of the matter is, any negotiations on changing stone on the sides of the buildings uh, hasn't changed. We haven't got to that point in negotiation. That's a private matter outside this commission. Where we relax standards, just so the commission knows, on the east end in discussions with the board were areas that, where you have a 10 foot sidewall separation, wrapping the buildings in brick didn't provide a visual value to it. So what we asked for was if we can relax that standard to put, put the investment elsewhere, and that was agreed to. It, it was an economic decision, and that's what we were addressing. That's what the board member was bringing up tonight. It wasn't to take away value, it was just to use architectural materials in a way where we can put value elsewhere. It's a common thing done in architecture, especially when you can't even see that, that brick uh, between the side yards. Um, when I talked about, and maybe I misspoke out of turn, about this area being a junk pit, or whatever I said, let me rephrase what I, what I mean. This site, this was a two million sale uh, project where Hubble purchased it at arm's length from the club and we set up standards to, de to develop this. It's wholly owned by, by an entity of Hubble Realty Company, Hubble Homes, under Wakanda LLC. That uh, LLC did a lot to improve this area. We had to completely revamp uh, the sewer treatment systems uh, in the area. We had to replace significant amounts of soil. We found everything from horse manure to old golf carts to old carts, uh, just really poor soil conditions that we had to completely uh, take out and improve. The trees were dying and diseased in the property. We had an arborist come in and evaluate them and, and only took down trees uh, and preserved as many as we possibly could. The storm structure that was required of the city and made even larger going through the center of this park because it was found inadequate, removed the majority of the trees. But that wasn't our doing. We were trying to meet stormwater standards of the city to improve the area and improve flows as they move downstream. Uh, I can um, talk about in living expectations up to the Wakanda board, uh, in our view, in our perspective, could there be more communication? There always could be more communication, but living up to our word, making the investment in this project, doing things above and beyond and not asking for a penny. There's things that we've done that we've gone to other buyers to help remedy that we have not even addressed with the course. I just want to say for the record, out of, out of respect for the many members of that course, that we have done things out of respect for them to preserve value here. We will continue to do it. Park Avenue is a beautification project. Uh, those homes are of very high quality. I don't know if you had an opportunity to walk them. We're not asking to do anything of anything lower end here. We're asking for four additional units. And when they say that this is something that came uh, from Hubble to try to ch tweak or change something, this duplex idea came from their members to suit their needs, not from us. And we have purchase offers from people that are club members that are trying to live on this course to suit their needs as members. Uh, you, have to, you have to reflect changes in the economy and you have to reflect changes in terms of the contract when we purchase this property. We talk about issues where we have to live up to expectations. We were promised that 90% of these houses were sold when we made the purchase. All of a sudden the economy turned south and everybody said, well, wait a minute. We don't want to move in there now. This was before any architecture or anything was built. So when you have to change the dynamics to meet the needs of the people, of the community, and even those course members, um, that's what we're talking about. We're, we're changing but still preserving value. You know, you, you may table this item because of comments that were said for the no course. time. We'll give you one more minute. You may change this for the reasons or, or postpone this meeting for, for items that were said tonight. I think most of these items can be clarified between us and the course after they understand that really nothing's changing here. Um, there's further, obviously from tonight, I'm, I'm flabbergasted by some of the comments were made and, and completely set back given what's happened. But we will take the time to meet with those people that have raised those concerns and um, work through them professionally as we always have and uh, continue forward with a valuable project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I have a question oh, for you. Joe, no, there's a Joe, just um, 
just to clarify, you said that you have communicated with the Wakanda board and members, but what about, I think I want to go back to Christine, what about the neighborhood? I have, I have not had a direct neighborhood with, with a direct meeting with the neighborhood or, around here on the amendment, no. Okay, I think that's kind of our concern in addition to the Wakanda board is that, that's a fair the point. residents who are here. I have a question. What year was the land sold? 2008. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Let me go ahead and close the public hearing. I need a motion. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I was going to clarify on the notices. The cards are actually a courtesy based on the notice fee that's paid. They can make those uh, written comments on any medium and provide them to us, so if a letter. The, the statute says written opposition. Um, in this case, if we do receive something written opposition from Wakanda Club, that will certainly put it into that 6th, 7th. Uh, Eric, once again, that's yeah. the state code requirement that says that the opposition has to be in writing. Right. And what that tally does is we look at all the property owners of land within 200 feet of the subject property, and if more than, if the owners of more than 20% of the land within 200 feet of the property object, it triggers a six sevenths vote of the city council. It does not automatically force a denial of a rezoning or, or anything else. It just triggers a six sevenths vote of the city council. Um, and so we, uh, as far as I know, Des Moines is the only city I'm aware of that actually mails out a postcard uh, for written comments. And Eric is correct. Those can come in on letter form. You've seen that before at your hearings. Um, and so it's, it's not, not a due process issue. Anyone can write a letter and uh, comply with state code. Uh, Eric, two other things. Uh, to confirm, four additional units on this, the 26 units right now that are approved on the property it, the property is 8.1 acres in size. That's a density of 3.2 dwelling units per acre. Adding four additional units to the property raises that density to 3.7 dwelling units per acre. Uh, under our code, low density residential is up to six units an acre. So th this is an even, you, you know, r roughly half of that requirement. That's why I asked that question. Um, the next point was there was a comment about population increase, concerns about that. Uh, based on the census, our, our household size is about two and a half persons per dwelling unit in Des Moines. So four additional units would equate to a population increase of 10 people for a development of 8.1 acres in size. And finally, uh, there was a concern about traffic issues. And Eric, if you could please confirm, yeah. did we receive, I know we route these plans to the uh, traffic, and traffic and transportation department. Did we receive any comments or concerns? We got a, we got no comment basically, which indicates that there that the facilities on park would be adequate for the amount of trips that would be generated by the. Did we get anything numbers. back from traffic and transportation, Eric? I mean, any comment whatsoever saying no, it's okay no or comment. it's not okay? Yeah. Has traffic and transportation had a chance to review it? Yes. Okay. Um, and again, if you're going to continue it, we can certainly double double check on that but um. all right any I need a motion oh, I have one quick question of Eric with the these the property owners of the properties that have been developed on the south side of Park Avenue were they given a send a, a card yes and so none of them have responded one way or the other we have not gotten cards from any of them at this point um, the, the in, just so you know the inside is treated just like the 200 around if there was a multiplicity of ownership within the area being changed, 20% of that would also trigger. Eric, those written written objections can come in up until the city council hearing on the right. zoning, correct? It is right. not, tonight is not a deadline for right. those. And the, right, and in terms of the state requirement, the city council will publish notice of a hearing <coughs> to, to meet the due process requirement. I have a question. CJ. Um, Eric, um, I've noticed in several places here it says should there be some tree removal that it would be have to have approval of the community development director. Is that in conjunction with our municipal arborist or? At, at this point in time, uh, 
that was adopted before we had a new uh, arborist on board at that time. So uh, we would certainly consult with the uh, municipal arborist. And if the uh, planning and zone, plan and zoning wants to recommend to revise that to be more directive to the municipal but, arborist. But Eric, to yeah. clarify, we would consult them, but right. currently the ordinance as worded is the community development director in consultation right. with, and the community development director is basically charged with administering that, that ordinance. It is on private property, not right. public right of way, where the municipal arborist has jurisdiction. Yeah. So we, we work with them for that review. But if you could clarify, uh, men, that we have many new commissioners on, on, on since this was first considered. And, when that PUD uh, original plan was, was considered, there was a tree survey done. There were numerous pro trees that were diseased um, that were not required to be mitigated under the, the uh, policy at that time. They did have to mitigate for trees, other trees that were, were removed on the property. And if I, if I recall, there was a note about the building envelopes. If there were additional trees removed, they had to demonstrate that they'd complied with the the mitigation ratios. So um, I'm not aware of any of that changing in this no, proposal. They're so. not proposing to change that. And there were, I believe there were some trees if they were in the right of way on park that would have been subject to the city's review on the yes. public side. CJ, a follow up? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I was on the other side when these things were before this council and some of the old members here would probably remember that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, will we get Tim? a discussion before I move? No, I need a motion is what I'm looking for, but we've got a lot of questions going to we'll staff. Okay. Move to deny. Is there any, any discussion? Joanne. Um, I concur with Tim. Uh, and the reason being, um, there's a lot of history there. Uh, I was... Born and raised very close by. My brother, Caddy, same time Phil was there. Um, my family belonged to the country club. So I'm very familiar with that whole thing. And um, I'm, I'm a history nut, shall we say. I object to taking history and modifying it too much. What you have done in the original proposal to me is enough. I can't see adding more homes there. Um, and the traffic issue, which I am amazed the traffic department hasn't said something more about this, because that street's not that wide. And the uh, increased traffic there coming down over the hill has got to be an issue. Um, I've been up and down that street millions of times. And I really feel that the traffic is, is going to be an issue if you have a younger family particularly, and there's more than like two cars in any one of those driveways. So I, I really can't go with the increase in, in, um, in the homes in that project. CJ? I would like to uh, just address this economic issue for a moment. Um, I've seen a list of where Des Moines is really on the move. We're at the top of a lot of Forbes, Fortune magazine. Mm -hmm. We have jobs coming. I think maybe it requires a little bit of patience on economic development rather than asking for a shortcut to make this project work because this is a sacred part of our city. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it's probably going to take a little patience, but I think the buyers will be there because our city is on the move. Uh, Mr. Sure. Chair, I, I agree with what CJ just said and, uh, and Joe. Uh, first of all, I'm not 100% sold on the fact that some of them 150-year-old oaks were diseased. Uh, uh, the mitigating is great, but these these trees are, are been around since uh, well, yeah, forever. Uh, uh, the developer mentioned living by your word. Uh, our neighborhood just went through uh, 
finishing up a, a uh, something that's been changed in our neighborhood, and it was a PUD. And they used the PUD as a quasi-guarantee that things won't be changed. And, uh, you know, it's a planned development, and that, I just feel that a PUD is, there's a reason there's a PUD, and that's because this is how you planned it. And like CJ said, uh, you know, yeah, things are turning around, the economy's turning around, uh, there's more to it than, than the bottom line on the, the shareholders. And, and if the club's not behind this, or the neighbors aren't behind it, I, I cannot support this. Vicki, do you have anything? I pretty much concur with what's been said. Okay. Shirley? Lots of information. I was here when we did the original plan, and so this is kind of really disappointing to hear that it's not working so well. Um, and I can understand and have a lot of respect for Hubble uh, and what they've done for this city. And um, it's unfortunate that it just seems like with, uh, with the economy and the need for amendments to be made that somehow in the midst of all of that, we lost our communication. And I think that's probably um, the, the sorriest part of it all. I guess I was thinking about what they had said about the, the neighborhood association. At this point, I'm not really sure that the neighborhood association feels that they have that much impact when it comes to Wakanda, because a lot of people that I talked to thought that this was Wakanda that was doing it, as opposed to Hubble. So um, I'm hoping that somewhere along the line, people can talk and work out something that's going to um, continue to be beautiful for that area. Will? Uh, when I uh, was asked to serve on this commission um, in my introductory training session, um, I w the director of the department suggested that um, I should wait until the um, public hearing to make up my mind one way or another about an issue, and that way to be able to listen to both sides of the of the story. And obviously, there are usually two sides to the story. Um, the piece that I come away with this is rather similar to Shirley's, um, that if um, something is proposed um, and the lines of communication are never opened up or are insufficient, it leads to problems down the road. And unfortunately, I think this is a case in point. And so um, I, uh, I think I'll vote to deny the request. Christine. I'll also vote to deny the request. Um, very similar issues too. I think um, engaging the people that live there and the conversations and getting input from them on how they perceive that will impact their lives is extremely important. And um, you know, it was reiterated that no the neighborhood really wasn't engaged in that process. I think that's very important. The other piece that I think is important too that I heard, and Mike Mike brought this up first and said, well, if we have a few weeks. You know, if, if you have the opportunity to, to talk and get together and visit, do you think that'll make a difference? My, my sense is that no, it, I don't think that will make a difference. It sounds to me as if you've, you've already tried to do that. And if you've, you've made requests and the requests, you know, there hasn't been a, you know, both coming to the table and negotiating. So I don't think we should waste any time and I'll support the denial. Jackie. Uh, I also support the denial. So if you're counting votes, Mr. Chair, it's we're not, we're not, it's not we're not looking voting good. Yet. We're just, you guys don't even actually have to take a position. But, yeah. um, but I would like to um, express the point of view of two of a South Sider that if there was any part, um, I guess I agree with those who do not characterize what happened as being a blight in that neighborhood prior to the development. There was no blight, because I can tell you that the neighbors would have screamed if there were any part of that neighborhood that looked like it was a blight. But that in itself leads me to believe that we do, number one, have a communication problem that um, I agree wholeheartedly that if neighbors felt that there was no impact that they could make because they thought that this was a done deal with the Wakanda Club, then that too, you know, was unfortunate. And um, so I just think that uh, this might have been a marriage that didn't have enough counseling. 
Joanne. Just want to say that I do uh, like what Hubble does most, most of the time. And uh, I've had an opportunity to be a party of some sort of negotiations on this panel and in my neighborhood association and, and with the Southside Revitalization Partnership. And uh, we really do respect them. But in this particular one, I just can't, can't go with what they're asking for. CJ. OK, that's fine. Mike? I don't support the motion. I think it's a door that closes much too solidly. Um, in the past, we've allowed the applicant to go back and meet with the neighborhood group to see if there could be something done. And there can be positive benefits from that. As I hear Mr. Buckley say, they wish they hadn't agreed to softening some rules. If they were to come back, maybe they can get some of those things that they agreed to earlier put back in as a possibility. Um, I just think it closes the door much too solidly. I have a question for staff. If we vote to deny this, which sounds like we're going to do, what options does the applicant have? Can they withdraw it before it goes to council and go through the start the process all over again? Because if, if we vote to deny it, how long do they have to wait before they can come back? Is it a year or something like that, or am I a mess? If council denies right, the zoning. If, if the city council were to deny it, then the clock would tick on if that. If they were to withdraw before city council, could yeah, city... If they withdraw, then everything's off the table. Um, the, uh, the other thing would be the time period between when it, the recommendation is forwarded till when they actually set the and, hearing. And I don't know that it would make a difference, you know, again, if they had a couple of weeks. But I, I always believe in dialogue. So I'm going to vote not to support this motion because I think they should have the, the opportunity to go back to the neighborhood group and go back to Wakanda to see if they could work something out and maybe, again, get some of those things that they acquiesced earlier put back in, if that's important. Greg? I'm agreeing with Mike on this one. I'm going to vote against the denial. Okay. May I add? Truly. May I add just one, one other thing? And Eric or Mike, if I'm wrong, correct me. But um, when it comes to the tree situation, I know that there was, a, there was a study done before those trees were removed out there, right? Yes. yes. It, and, and there were some trees out there that were not very healthy, and that was the reason why they were taken out. I just want to say that. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to call it to a vote. The motion is to deny, uh, deny the request. All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed? Two. Two opposed. Three. It's three. I'm sorry, three. Shirley and Mike, Mike and Greg. Nine to three. Nine to three. So just to clarify, uh, the city council meeting on uh, it'd be the 21st of May is where council would set the date of public hearing for the rezoning. Correct. And the public hearing would then be held the first meeting in June, which is June. Get, that date. get that date. I think it's June 7th. I'll get the date. June 7th sounds right to me. June 11th, 11th. Okay. would be the public hearing date on this so any opposition cards or letters could come in up until june 11th and staff would forward any received prior to the hearing generally our packet goes to the council the friday before the council meeting so if we had any of those ahead of time we could include those in the packet otherwise they could be submitted at up until the meeting the hearing dates similarly a reject or a uh, something written could be rescinded in writing as well right. and we would track that all the and, way till that hearing and then also to clarify that because the Planning Commission has recommended denial also state code requires that if there's a denial recommendation from the Planning Commission it requires a six-sevenths vote of the City Council to overturn uh, the Commission's recommendation okay give us the date of the packet the meeting would be June 11th, so ten, June 8th would be when the council packet would go out for that hearing. So those go out about noon. I would suggest they post their documents on 7th. the website too. <laughs> okay. 
7th at the latest so we can forward those to the clerk's office. You might look Friday on the website. They usually put all the agenda with links to all the council communications. On this. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number three. Um, yeah, yeah. Question. 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 Will. Uh, enumerate the vote again. Uh, it was nine to three. I'm sorry. Nine to three. No, it can't be nine to three. Eight to three. Eight to three. Somebody left. Yeah. No, he just left. He had one person left. One, two, three, four. Ted. Oh, that's right. We had Ted was an abstention. All right. Eight to three. I'm sorry. Eight three two. Seven three. There were twelve here. One two three, and two four, five, There two were twelve. Here. Six seven eight. I have thirteen members. Simonson is. Just left. Just left. Mike, just left. That's your third. Eight, three, two. Yes, that's what I got. Okay, now I got to trust Kathy. Yeah. She knows it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on to item number three. Request from Aztec Motors, represented by Efren Moya. Mayorga. Mayorga? Yes. For review and approval of a site plan under design guidelines for vehicle display lots to allow an expansion of the existing display, vehicle display lot located at 1902. Southeast 14th Street onto property at 1800 Southeast 14th Street. Eric, you're presenting on this one? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thanks, sir. Uh, I'll call your attention in the staff report to uh, item eight that speaks to the relevant zoning history. Last fall, the city council lifted the overlay that would prohibit um, expansion of a vehicle display lot. And with respect to this property, with, with respect to the subject okay. property that we're dealing with in the expansion. So, um, this area that we're talking about right here was removed from the vehicle display lot overlay with the number of conditions that are listed there. Um, the, they've now submitted their site plan, which is in your packet. Uh, as you can see, there's still. It's an underutilized site. There's some um, under uh, utilized buildings that are on the site. This kind, of, this is looking west. The regional basin sits behind this and is, is floodplain zoning, so it's not something that has to be buffered from directly. Uh, plus, there's a lot of vegetation that sits in between. This gives you a more of a sense of what's going on here. It's uh, not paved, not improved. That's looking south. One of the things that will be, that is part of this is that they will remove the canopy on the existing site, which is the old gas canopy. Um, they did go back on the south, the original site to the south, they did go to the board and were for setback relief, they were denied, and they have since complied by putting in their uh, tree plantings and, and landscape setback. So you can see some new uh, part, what we call a perimeter lot plantings there. Uh, we did not get anybody to come and uh, view the site plan, therefore no response cards were handed out. We didn't get any written responses in objection or in favor. Eric, who's responsible for fixing that curb? Is that the state? This right here? Yeah. It's probably through some agreement with the state and the city in terms of DOT. maintaining the public right of way. That isn't something that they didn't fail to restore or something like that. If, the, for instance, a site plan may require you to remove a drive approach and restore it back to curb, then it would be the property's owner responsibility. In this case, it's just not in, it's in disrepair, so. So are the items right across. Uh, so, if you know if the city does it, a lot of times they get state funds to do maintenance work or something of that nature. Otherwise, it's the state's responsibility. Looking at the site plan itself, this is the existing site. I'll zoom out. I apologize. The lighting's getting bad here for me in terms of uh, a shadow effect here from the crease. So I have to hold that down for you. Eric, could you clarify which at, uh, of those lots is addressed as 1902? Uh, 
assume it's believe a southern that, lot. Yeah, that, that the whole thing will become 1902 based on the existing lot 1902. Yeah. So one of the zoning provisions was that they combine these parcels. Which which lot though is currently 1902? Let's see if I got that in the It's the southern yeah, lot, correct? Is it okay? It is the south one. Yeah, I think it is the southern lot. Okay. And just to clarify, the zoning condition when the lifting of the overlay was done uh, required removal of the canopy on 1902. 1902. Yes. And I think the photo you showed is that still exists? Yeah. So that still has to be removed from the property, correct? Right. For them to exercise the any vehicle display lot on the so that canopy that's in that photo would have to be removed still correct yes they would also be removed and that's actually proposed or designated in the site plan itself okay getting to the uh, staff recommendation we want to ensure that they do combine these parcels for tax purposes into one site which is point number two. Uh, there's some Scrivener type things from the comments of the administrative review that are in item one. Uh, we want to note that they want they shall be limited to one freestanding sign on the southeast 14th Street frontage, and that's not sh uh, that's not shown in the site plan, but we can regulate that through the site plan. The existing canopy structure shall be removed immediately. Again, that's also a zoning uh, condition of the lifting of the overlay. And that it shall meet all the city landscaping standards for C2. And I, I should point out that there's some deficiencies on what they were proposing. So we'll have to make sure that they meet the numbers that they have to have for the total open space and the um, interior lot landscaping. Uh, Eric, well, since, yeah, thank you. Since you have that um, plan on, on the screen, um, on page five, um, it says that under landscaping and buffering, the submitted site plan proposes 13 overstory trees spaced evenly every 25 feet. Um, but I count 14 on the plan. Um, rhyme that for me, would you please? I think uh, this one probably wasn't being counted. Is that the one? You're, were you counting this one that's south of the boundary? Right here? Yeah, I think you're counting all of them, weren't you? Well, yeah, I was counting all you of them. You see what I'm pointing at? So that's see, a public right of way. Yeah, we wouldn't give them credit for that tree because that's in another, in front of another property. Okay, thank you. We good? Question. I have a question. If these two parcels are combined, what does that do to their ability, like if they want to sell it someday? That, maybe that's split? Why, that's actually one of the reasons why we recommended that at the time they lift the overlay because in terms of tracking whose ownership, the, the overlay provisions only allow expansion of a vehicle display lot onto property that was already owned as of the time. So when they lifted the overlay, they allowed them to bring in property they didn't own at the time the overlay was put into place. So by requiring them to combine the lots, then it allows us to track that. And if they try to divide it, so another operator, Very we don't want them buying off we want one lot, not two lots. Right. Mm -hmm. One car lot, not two lots. Right. And then th that way we don't have to track separate ownerships later on down the road. Any other questions? you have anything else, Eric? No, I don't have anything else. Is the applicant here? Please come forward. Give us your name and address. Vince Pazentini, Associated Engineering Company of Iowa, 2917 Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway, Des Moines, Iowa. Um, we're presenting this and we've got no problem with recommendations from staff to get that done. Any questions? Any questions? I do. Okay. Vince, I look at this and I've, I've voted against this I think at least twice. And the reason is because where are the heavy metals, what kind of things are we going to do to ensure that we're not going to get drainage from this into that overflow pool and into the Des Moines River? Well, into our water supply. There is a detention pond. I understand right. that, but the detention pond doesn't protect us from having things in the detention pond going into the river when it overflows. Gotcha. Right? Correct. 
So we have any scrubbers, we have anything in the place there that's going to take care of those heavy metals that are going to wind up on the base of that particular development. That one I don't know. Uh, wasn't brought up to me before. <laughs> Dan. And we can do can something. I, can I speak Go ahead, Greg. You, you, say, you say this every time, and I, I and I appreciate you saying it. But the fact of the matter is a moving car drips more crap than a sitting car. And so if you want scrubbers on this car lot, you need one on every public street. You know what? And that may be a little extreme, but I wouldn't have a problem with that either. <laughs> no, can look but we don't have anything in place is what I'm saying. Correct. All right. So, Eric, to confirm, they will comply with our stormwater management guide right, and standards. Right, over an acre, so you have to do the water quality detention, which requires them to detain the lesser rain events, which will definitely handle uh, some of those things that Dan's brought up better than the previous standard that we had, which was just for the flood control detention. I have a question. How many car lots does this gentleman own now? On the street. I'm sorry. Does this, it's you have one just about 200 yards down, right? Down the street, just uh, on the north, north side of the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The one south of Come and Go on the west yeah. side. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's a beautiful place. A beautiful place. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. I, it's yeah, it is. It's very nice. We're south of Gittingo. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, if I might. I know when the council considered the lifting of that, they discussed the number of car lots. And um, it was mentioned that the appearance of his current lot was a nice improvement to the corridor. Um, the former gas station, C store, and gas canopy that was on the properties wanting to expand was a dilapidate, dilapidated structure on East 14th. And I know that was also mentioned at the hearing that. He had cleaned up that property, eliminated that blight along the corridor, and that, um, if I recall the con the comment, it was that they thought that this was definitely an improvement in the appearance along the corridor, it being demonstrated by how he'd, he'd operated his current facility. So um, those were just some of the comments I know when they voted to lift, lift the overlay on this property. Anything further, Vince? Any other questions, Vince? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in? Anyone here? To, I know. We're, anyone here to speak in favor of the application? <laughs> seeing none. Anyone here to, in opposition to the application? Seeing uh, there's nobody in the room, so yeah. I'm going to close the public hearing. Vince, you don't need rebuttal for yourself, do you? All right. Oh, Moose staff. Any questions? I just oh, want to tell him that it's been a gr it's great having him as a business partner on 14th. We appreciate it, and he is setting the standards for the car lots that are coming in there. If we're going to have car lots, that's all I got to say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Joanne, if this was a new uh, car lot, I would have said no, but it's not. And your other car lot is very nice looking for a car lot, and uh, hoping that you will do the same for this property. Uh, I, I can only imagine that you will. You seem to have pride in your place. And uh, so I am definitely for this um, because of, of the history he has in his, the businesses and the business he's run. Even this old one here is a nice, it's neat and clean. So uh, I'm, I'm not objecting to it at all and I would, I would vote for this. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Opposed? One. Me. The lone wolf. Director's report. Um, Mike. Just a couple of things um, for the commission. Let me get back to my first page here. Um, just once again, the tomorrow plan is continuing on. Uh, I sent out several notices about the uh, meetings that have been held on that. Um, I really encourage the commission to be involved and attend those as you can. Um, the input is important in that. Currently, the uh, uh, current activity, I guess, that is occurring with the tomorrow plan is there's a, um, a web exercise called uh, Design My Des Moines. It's an interactive tool that's, that's available. Um, and really the gist of, of the interactive tool is that it allows people to prioritize what is important to them 
from different planning goals and, and uh, growth goals and, and amenities that they'd like to see in the region. And then it also allows uh, people to understand um, when they choose those priorities and then choose different alternatives, how their priorities and the alternatives they're choosing either agree or in conflict with each other. And it's a really valuable tool to, to communicate those, those um, um, issues and, and, I guess, policies. And I, it's a great educational tool to utilize. And so I really encourage people to do that because it will shape um, the plan for the region. And that is available at tomorrowplan.com. I really encourage you to go to that and, and look at that. Final thing, um, I just wanted to let you know last night I attended a Ingersoll Corridor meeting, which Ted has been heading up, and I'm not going to steal Ted's thunder, but I wanted to give kudos to Ted for the work that he's done with the Ingersoll Corridor, coordinating 10 neighborhood associations that abut the Ingersoll and Grand Corridors to try and build um, support for planning of the area and growth of the area. If Ingersoll Corridor is strong, the neighborhoods around it will be strong, and um, that corridor has a lot of what our other corridors are looking for. And so this is truly, I think, a model. And Ted has done a phenomenal job and put in a ton of work on that project. You. you know, can I, can I just add one, one thing to that? Um, Stickle, ADO Chiropractic, anybody interested in having a free meal at that uh, Red China Bistro on Monday at 6 o'clock? He's inviting anybody who wants to come by and hear his little spiel. He'll pick up the tab for dinner. So, Monday at six. <laughs> oh, no, not over two ninety nine. Arno, I want to thank you, by the way, for covering for me. Well, it was pretty easy to do since I didn't have any voice. So, <laughs> he did a good job. I heard you did a great job. Yeah, he did a great job. Yeah, just don't let him. You can watch it on YouTube. Any any other yeah. any YouTube. other information to be shared for the good of the group? <laughs> Seeing none. Dismissed. Here we are again. I haven't seen you around in a while. Where have you been? New look, you found your style. Gossip in tabloid papers Said it was for the